Hello everyone. I felt the need to share today. Um, I am nine months post J pouch takedown surgery and I wanted to give a little update as to where I'm at and also just wanted to share what's worked, what I've learned, um, what I am noticing out there in terms of information and there being a lot of um, contradictory information. There's just all kinds of information on the internet and I think it's really important to do your own research and to um, learn and dig and understand about um, the disease that underlies a lot of our troubles with the, the J pouch. So I had a pretty rough first few months. I'd say like the first month or two were not too bad, but then I developed um, pouchitis and a fistula. I also struggled with Bartholin gland uh, cysts or infections that would come and go. Um, I was put on antibiotics uh, quite a bit at first and the antibiotics would kind of work a little bit um, to help with some continence and frequency, but ultimately they didn't really do very much. Um, and I found them to be hard on my system. And then eventually I was really struggling. I had lost a lot of weight again, um, probably, I think that was probably around four or five months after the J pouch takedown surgery um, and I finally was hospitalized again and was um, had developed a couple of other autoimmune reactions a pancreatitis attack and an autoimmune arthritis attack and then I finally decided to go back on the SCD diet um, and I really feel that it's an important thing to look at um, because the hospital and the nurses are not really educated in um, the bacterial microbiome of the gut and I just find that some gastroenterologists um, understand if they have a nutrition background or if they have done research in their education. Um, I had one gastroenterologist that said that what you eat completely doesn't have any effect on um, inflammatory bowel conditions and I just felt that was so um, horrible to negate that being a big piece of the pie of our healing moving forward. Um, and then I just see a lot of J-Poach uh, people out there that are eating a lot of sugar or, you know, struggling <laughs> and on medication, um, but then putting food in their bodies that might be making them worse or perpetuating their disease. So I know what it's like to be um, in that rough spot. So I think that it's important that um, medication does help symptomatically. Um, however, um, there are a lot of people that are maintaining remission um, with this diet. Um, this is a book called Breaking the Vicious Cycle by Elaine Gottesall. Um, and she's sort of the pioneer of the SCD diet. Um, her daughter in the, I believe it's like the early 1900s, um, I can't remember what exact year, but it was a long time ago. Um, she has since passed away, but her daughter had severe ulcerative colitis and was close to having surgery as a very young child. Um, and she found a doctor that gave her this protocol, the specific carbohydrate diet, and her daughter was able to go from almost needing a colectomy um, to going into remission. So um, it's possible that we can do what it takes to um, help assist our healing journey. 
Um, so back to my story, um, I was again struggling really bad um, a few months ago and was put on a, um, a drug called azathioprine. Um, it's just another drug in sort of the realm of biologics. Um, however, this one's a pill form. So I appreciate that I don't have to get infusions. Um, sometimes those drugs do help um, if the disease is that out of control. Um, it can be a partner to help us find remission again. And then the, the diet can be another big contributing factor as well as other things, obviously. There's a whole pie of um, things, pie, pieces of the pie that contribute to autoimmunity. And I think part of that is mental health and lifestyle and our emotions and things like that. Another part of it's very mysterious. Maybe we will never know why some of us get um, these autoimmune diseases. Uh, so anyways, it's, we're doing what we can within our, our own uh, power and I really enjoy the science and the research done um, behind this. She's got a master's in science and has done a ton of research and there's a ton of research in this book about the microbiome of the gut. Um, and so this is what I'm getting at with um, when the hospitals and the nurses and doctors t tend to tell you to eat starchy food, um, like pasta and rice and things like that um, after you get your J pouch because it helps thicken up your stool and that's supposed to be the avenue to help you um, have less stool have less bowel movements and frequency um, however that I don't think is the best advice because the reason why many of us are having um, f high frequency um, and diarrhea is because we have disease we have inflammation in the small bowel which is basically what we had in our large bowel that's now gone and there's a whole microbiome happening in the intestines where there's um, a bacteria that's overgrown and it's preventing the good bacteria from thriving and these bad bacteria often are um, what are creating what's like leaky gut and those ulcerations in the intestine and um, so it's preventing the intestines that inflammation from being able to absorb more so if we're absorbing more from the intestine then our stools are going to be um, thicker and less frequent so if we think of it in terms of um, creating a healthy bowel and um, creating an environment where our intestinal walls can heal so they can actually be absorbing um, what we need out of our food properly, then we are gonna moderate our bowel movement that way rather than um, taking you know, starchy sugars that are feeding these unhealthy bacteria um, that for a lot of us are causing problems. So if you're interested in the science around it, I highly recommend everyone, anyone that's got an inflammatory condition, this is also celiac, cystic fibrosis, colitis, diverticulitis, Crohn's, they even talk about a link, um, links to autism in here. Um, there's gut and brain connection so when you first come home from the hospital it's easy to just you know after surgery to want to and um, just get back to normal and think oh I'm just gonna 
indulge. Um, my disease is gone because my colon is gone, which I think is a, a bit of a precarious um, road to go down. Um, I think that it's really important to um, err on the side of caution and do what you can to avoid, um, you know, having inflammation in the pouch or pouchitis. So, um, yeah, I, it's, it's not, okay, so another thing I wanted to add to this is you don't necessarily have to be on this SCD diet forever. They say one to two years of being on it helps to balance out um, the microbiome in your intestines, um, and then you can slowly integrate um, you know, other foods back into your diet. However, I just think it's so important to be conscious of what we're putting into our bodies in this sort of sensitive place that we're in now with, with only half of our intestines left. Um, because a lot of what we consume in this generation that we're in is is full of ingredients that um, are really not good for our guts like all of the preservatives um, the binding agents anything that says gum is not good for your gut um, they are scientifically researched over time to deteriorate the gut lining so those are like xanathan gum, acacia gum, um, anything that's a gum is a binding agent that's like super commonly used in food products now that is no good. Um, another thing to look at is genetically modified ingredients and uh, again preservatives in the form of like inorganic fruit and veggie if you think of um, an apple, um, non-organic apples are sprayed 40 times, 40, 40 times in their growing season and they have directly linked um, those pesticide chemicals to um, cancers and diseases and things like that and also messing with your gut genetically modified they genetically modify <laughs> the seeds or the crops so that bugs won't won't get at the crops however um, the crops that we're eating that are genetically modified also bother our guts over time and this is the thing the FDA can approve things because um, it's a cumulative thing it's it's like if you're going to eat a small amount of genetically modified it's not going to kill you it's cumulative in the body um, where we eat these genetically modified products like 80 percent of corn 80 percent of soy are nowadays are genetically modified and every time we consume those things we are um, in essentially adding to leaky gut and inflammation. So if we want to give ourselves a fighting chance of um, being healthy, I recommend eating organic, going with an SCD diet, um, at least for a couple of years, and picking up some good research that's not funded by Big Pharma, because again, Big Pharma is funding a lot of the research that our gastroenterologists and our Western medical systems are doing. Um, there are a few doctors and people out there that have done a ton of research um, that is based around environmental conditions, around food. Um, so again, your doctors and nurses are all well-intentioned, but they are trained by a education system that is largely funded and backed by the pharmaceutical industry. So they have a kind of a one-track mind of the way that they're trained 
Um, so to kind of break that vicious cycle, um, another book that I really love um, was called The Autoimmune Fix by Tom something rather. It's called The Autoimmune Fix and another incredible book with tons of uh, research backing it. So <laughs> um, I did have to take Imodium at first. There is a transition period with the J-Pouch. Um, I had a pretty rough time for a while there, um, but it did get better. And the drugs, I was on a bout of prednisone that did help me for a while. Um, but just know that we can't be on prednisone and, we, and that ideally we're not on these pharmaceutical drugs forever. They can help for a little while. Um, but if there's a way we can mitigate it with uh, a good diet, um, this is the one that I would recommend. I've been feeling way better. Um, in the last few months, I've been pretty strict about this diet. It's not always easy, but I'm learning to cook and I feel like I'm eating well. I'm getting lots of good calories in. Um, you do get used to it. It's nice if you have a couple of family members or friends that can kind of eat with you sometimes or cook with you. Another thing I wanted to say about the J pouch is that I, um, most of us have about, a, I think it's like a five to seven hour window from but the time that you eat to the time that it's coming out the other end. So I do stop eating by three o'clock every day so that I can have a good night's sleep. Um, if I find that if I eat past three o'clock, I am up in the night and I don't sleep and it's horrible. Um, what other tips? I don't take Imodium anymore. Um, I, the fistula that I had is, is slowly starting to um, get better according to my last MRI. However, I still feel it sometimes. Um, so I'm hoping to avoid surgery for that. It's not too bothersome for me at the moment. Um, I'm just going to um, do sits baths. So I, I do sits baths. I take uh, supplements as well. Uh, sits baths with Epsom salts really help. Um, yeah, you can buy these little sits bath bowls um, at the drugstore that I highly recommend. And what else? I, I do really well with um, muffins and smoothies, um, cooked things. I don't do that well with super high fiber veggies and unless it's like well cooked and mashed up. Um, again, I just get creative with what I'm allowed to have. I find um, squash and celeriac root is like a nice mashed potato alternative. Um, obviously I have to eat meat with this diet otherwise I'm just lacking nutrition. I do find that fish, salmon goes down really well. Um, so every day uh, a plain Greek yogurt is um, really good. I stopped taking probiotics um, and just am leaning towards more uh, food-based um, ways to get my good bacteria in. Um, so yeah, I use organic um, Greek yogurt. Lots of protein, goes down easy, um, good bacteria. Uh, there's, you're not supposed to have lactose on this diet. Um, I'm not going to go too far down the diet um, rabbit hole. Uh, if you look up SCD diet, it will tell you what's legal and illegal on that diet. It's good to stick pretty strict to it if you can. Um, otherwise, the microbiome um, can go out of whack. So again, it's like just adapting. There's some really good recipe books out there. Um, Danielle Walker has some 
really good recipes that I love. Um, and if you have any questions, um, feel free to comment, send me a message, um, hang in there if you're struggling and it does get better. I keep hearing from other people that it, it takes six months to a year. One girl even said two years um, to get used to the J pouch and the symptoms uh, do get better. Um, over time you do adapt. However, um, you also adapt your lifestyle and figuring out what works, what doesn't work. Um, so baby steps and I'm just wanted to send a lot of love <laughs> out there to everyone or anyone um, going through challenges with their with Crohn's or colitis or if you have an ostomy um, all of this information uh, could be relevant to you as well if you struggle with um, high output or watery output with your ostomy um, this information could be super helpful. That's all I want to say for today. And uh, yeah, hang in there. Have honey, not sugar. And we'll be in touch. Bye.